Okay, so 7.1. Uh, what confused me in looking at this problem is, I don't know whether it's uh, an oversight, but um, it should really be telling us that this is a plate like this. I suppose it might be fairly obvious. And this is a plate like this. So we're looking for A is going to be in the middle. So that's going to give me um, where well, the shear flow is going to be the maximum, and therefore the maximum shear stress. And B, which will be the point where I'm imagining this vertical um, plate is joining this horizontal plate. First thing I'll probably work out is what the inner section is. So I've got an inner section of 80. Take away two twelves. So 56 millimeters and then 80 take away two sixes, 68 millimeters. Um, when you're dealing with uh, these kind of problems, start with your shear flow equation and start working out bits that you need to solve in your shear flow equation. So the V is given to us. That's 150 kilonewtons. Uh, I is the next thing to work out. I'm going to use the void method to solve that. So we will use um, 112 BD sum of. So the outer one will be 112. 80 to the power 4, take away 112, um, right, so neutral axis is about here, so uh, B is 56, and D is 68. Right. Okay, so I get that to be one point nine four. Six zero times ten to the six millimeters to the power four. So that would be my I. Now the next thing you want to do is identify a section that you want to use as um, uh, what we're we doing first. So we're doing A first actually. Okay, so uh, for A we're looking for the shear and stress. So what we do is we find the shear flow first. So for A, that's going to be cutting through here. So what is our Q? Our Q is a bit of a pain. So Q equals the sum of area times uh, the particular centroids. So what we got for that? We got two of these sections, and then a section up here. The centroid values are 40 here and here. 
And for this top one, its centroid will be 40. So that's the 80 divided by 2. Take away 3. So that would be... What have I done wrong? Yeah, that's 20, sorry. So that uh, that's 37. That's the actual height. So we need to have a height of that. So that's 20. Okay. Right, so that's the centroids. Got two of them, so we can double those values. So let's start with them. So we've got two. Their areas are... So the widths are 12, the heights are 40, and the centroids are 20. And then for the top section, uh, its a width is, there's one of them, its width is 56. Its thickness is 6. And its centroid is 37. So let's work all that out. So that gives me, press my edge button, 31, and press it again. Okay, uh, 31.632 times 10 to the 3 millimeters. And so that will be when it reaches the power of 3. So that's what our Q is. So we found the V, we found the Q. Uh, we've got the I, so we know what the little Q is. So that would be 150,000 That's the V are working millimeters, 31.632 times 10 to the 3. Remember that I'm working in millimeters. Make a mental note. And we're being actually asked to find the shear stress. So therefore, what we want to do is take this formula and divide it by the thickness of contact, in effect. So that's T. Although I think in Arnold's notes, he's using B because it's the breadth. So I'll use B. B, big Q, I times B. And the contact, between here and here is going to be um, 6, but we got to imagine, oh no, sorry, I'm doing, sorry, I'm doing this one, contact between here and here, I was thinking ahead to the next one, so the, the contact is going to be 12. And there's going to be another 12 there. So there we want to put either. So I think in the lecture you could you could either say 2 times 20, 
twenty two times twelve or twenty four if you prefer. So I'll put two and again I guess I'll work in millimeters two times twelve. Okay. All right, so 150 to the 3 times 31.6. Okay, uh, I've divided this by the, the contact, and that's going to give me the shear stress. Okay, so that gives me 101.6. Uh, notice that's in millimeters, so that will be newtons per millimeters squared. And the nice thing about a newtons millimeter squared is it's the same as megapascals. Okay, so that is finding it at A. Now let's look at finding it at B. So I kind of got ahead of myself. So here we're now looking at the, your top section. So we're looking at this section here. So the only difference is finding our Q for this top section. That should be kind of easier because we've only got one sort of rectangle to deal with. Uh, and the Q is just going to be this part of the um, the term, isn't it? So 56, that's its width, that's its depth. And that's its centroid. So Q in this case will be 6 times 6 times 37. Twelve point four three two times ten to the three that would be in millimeters to the power three. A key dokey, um and a, it's gonna be pretty much the same thing, isn't it? So we've got the shear stress will be Q divided by our new thickness, so our contact, so that'll be the contact going through the cross-section A, and this is going through B. So you've got to consider that two, a shear and action on two sides, there and there. So 150 times 10 to the 3. Um, Q is now 12.432 times 10 to the 3. I doesn't change. This time, the contact that they're making between these two surfaces, there's two of them, and they are 6 millimeters. Uh, right, so different numbers. So, 150,000 divided by 2 divided by 6 and in this case I get 
nine megapascals. Okay, so I've jumped that step. So that's the um, shear at B. The uh, problem with that question is that it wasn't obvious, I think, from your worksheet that uh, you should be using this arrangement with two big plates uh, stuck on there and there. Okay, so that, that, that's that one done.